Hi there. The time window in ThingsBoard is a feature-rich tool for adjusting time intervals, the data of which you want to display on the dashboard. You can change time frames to extend or contract the displayed data interval, adjust telemetry aggregation settings to sort the data points to your liking, and switch grouping intervals for the data representation you need. With history mode, you can go days or weeks back in time, viewing the data from previous periods, and even set a specific date and time range to review the data from the day you have a special interest in. In this video, I'll show you how to use the time window to its full potential. Let's get started. I have an informational dashboard where three card widgets to the right are set to display current telemetry data and a chart widget and alarm table to the left set to display data according to the dashboard time window. Chart widget shows historical telemetry data while alarms table shows alarms from the time interval set at the moment. I will open the time window settings in the upper right corner and here we can see that the time interval is set to 30 minutes with the data aggregation set to average and a grouping interval of one minute. There are two major time window modes, real time, which is selected now, and history. Real time mode is useful when you need to view data that corresponds to the time window relative to the current timestamp. This can include data from the past minute, hour, day, and so on, with live updates. In turn, history mode concentrates on showing historical data without providing live updates on the dashboard. It is exceptionally useful when you need to review telemetry data or attributes from the past. The time window setting controls the time interval displayed on the widgets. You can select a predefined option from the drop-down list or enter a custom value, choosing specific days, hours, minutes, or seconds. I will set it to 15 minutes to display a smaller interval and click update to make the widgets follow the changes. Now let's switch to the relative parameter of the real-time mode. It changes the usual selection of time intervals to fixed periods, like current hour, day, or week, while keeping the live updates of the widgets. I will click Update to show the effect of its standard interval, current hour. You can now see the chart and alarms table displaying data from 11 a.m. to 12 a.m., which is when I filmed this clip. In history mode, the selection of time intervals is different for the relative time window. You can now apply intervals from the past, like yesterday, this day, last week, or previous month. I will switch the interval to yesterday and click Update to apply the change. Now the chart and the alarm table show data from the previous day. The range time window mode allows for selecting a specific time interval with an accuracy to a minute. I will display the data from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on May 27th by selecting this interval in the menu and click Update to see the changes. Now let's talk about configuring aggregation and grouping interval, whose functionalities are interconnected. Aggregation is especially useful when working with large volumes of raw data, as it helps to reduce the amount of information sent to the user interface, save bandwidth, and prevent browser overload. The aggregation parameter defines the method of processing data points during the period specified in the grouping interval field. By default, the aggregation mode is set to average, which means the calculation of the mean value of all data points over the selected interval, which is in our case set to one minute. You can alternatively set it to show mean or max values, value sums, value counts, or enforce no aggregation at all. I will display the lowest readings of the period by setting it to min and click update. Now the chart displays only minimal values from the period. There are two important things to know about aggregation settings. First, if any widgets using the dashboard time window display non-numeric data, you should set aggregation to none because strings or text can't be aggregated. Second, when aggregation is set to none, a max values slider appears. It controls the number of data points shown on the widget within the selected time window. I will set it to 100 and click Update to view the changes. You can now see that the chart displays raw data points, the same as they are sent by the device. With aggregation set to none, you can see that grouping interval setting becomes inaccessible, so I will switch back to the average aggregation to explain grouping intervals. They define which time range is used to aggregate data, 
the dashboard pulls data from the grouping interval you set, processes it according to the aggregation setting, and then the widget displays it. Data points will appear with that exact interval, which can adjust how often the widgets will be updated. Like the time window, it can be set to a predefined or custom value, down to a second. I will set it to 30 seconds and press update to display the changes. You can adjust the availability of certain time window settings to your end user. I will enter dashboard edit mode and click the edit time window icon on the toolbar. In the pop-up, click the gear icon in the top right corner to open the time window settings panel. Here, you can hide specific parameters, configure the lists of available intervals, aggregation options, and grouping options, or lock certain time window settings to prevent end users from changing them. Let's say I want the users to have access only to predefined time intervals and grouping intervals without the ability to customize them. For this, I disable custom interval selection for time intervals and grouping intervals by switching corresponding toggles. Click Apply, and now you can see that drop-down lists of available time and grouping intervals lack the custom option that I've explained at the beginning. Now I want to restrict the number of available aggregation functions and time interval options. By clicking the pencil icon to the right, I will open the configuration menu, uncheck all of the options by clicking the button in the upper row, and enable 30 minutes, 1 hour, and 12 hours. Aside from disabling the time window interval, you can adjust what grouping intervals would be available for each one, and which will be used by default. For the 1 hour time interval, I will keep only 30 seconds, 1 minute, and 2 minutes, assign 1 minute as the default grouping interval, and click Apply to save the changes. Now, if I try switching the time interval to 1 hour, you can see that all other options are lacking, and the default grouping interval was set to 1 minute, just like I specified in the configurational menu. For aggregation functions, I will disable all the options except average, and after that, also click the Hide toggle in the Aggregation row. Now, in the Time window settings, you will see the Aggregation row grayed out, with Average as the hard-coded selected option. If we save the changes on the dashboard and open Time window settings from the Dashboard View mode, you will see that the Aggregation setting is not available at all. You can adjust Time Zone of the dashboard to tailor it to different situations. Next to the Time window, you'll see the Time Zone button. By default, the time window uses the time zone from your browser, but you can select a different one manually or by typing in your desired time zone. I'll choose Europe Dublin UTC plus one. Click Apply and then Update. The time scale on the widget now matches the local time in Dublin. It is possible to configure a time window for each individual widget. I'll enable the widget time window by opening the chart widget settings, setting the selector to use widget time window, and clicking Apply. This switches the widget to its own time window. The available settings are the same as the dashboard level ones. A widget using its own time window is marked with a label telling its mode and time interval in the upper left corner, just below the title. This label is controlled by a display time window switch to the left of the time window settings. It controls whether the label with the current widget time window setting is visible. When enabled, it flags that the widget is using its own time window, and by clicking it, you can open the already familiar settings menu. To the right, there's a paint roller icon that opens the caption style settings, where you can choose the icon and its position, font size and type, color, and whether to show the current time window mode. I'll choose an icon, change the font color, and click apply to save. I will now use the label to open the widget time window settings and set its time interval to 15 minutes with the grouping interval of 30 seconds. Just keep in mind that some widgets, like the alarms table shown below the chart, offer fewer time window options. For ones who made it this far into the video, I have a bonus tip. You can hide the time window settings button from the view mode. To do this, enter edit mode and click settings. Here, scroll down to the Toolbar Settings section and uncheck the Display Time Window option. Click Save, and now, if I switch to the View mode of the dashboard, there will be no time window settings whatsoever. That may be handy when you do not want the end users to access time window settings at all. 
That wraps up today's video. Thanks for watching it all the way to the end. If you have any questions or thoughts, feel free to share them in the comments section below. I see you in the next video.